Hello all! This is an automatic battery protector. It came from Maplin. Ooh, must be 10 years ago now. And the idea is that it protects the battery in your vehicle. So you plug this into the accessory socket. Okay, that's not going to work at the moment because it's all broke. And uh, it protects the battery from being drained completely flat by something like one of those little fridges, which use quite a bit of power. And uh, so when your battery got a bit low, this thing has a comparator in it and a relay and said, clunk, no more. Now look what it says on the back. It says power consumption, 10 amperes. Well, this box doesn't consume 10 amperes. It's just got a relay in it. But that to me means you can put 10 amperes through this thing, through all parts of it. The cable gets a bit warm at 10 amperes. The socket, that seemed to survive. The plug, however, at 10 amperes, because I put 10 amperes through it for about half an hour, completely melts. Let's take a look inside. So here we are. What's melted? Well, it's hard to see because most of the stuff in here is metal. But what's actually melted are all the sort of channels, the plastic strips. And so things just sort of moved and the positive got very close to the negative. It didn't actually short, I don't think, because nothing went bang or nothing sort of cut out. But it just stopped working because what happened is the little pip, which protrudes out of the front, sort of vanished inside because I think everything kind of retreated back into the plug under the pressure of the spring. Here's the spring. And I'm pretty sure that this is the culprit because spring steel doesn't have the best conductivity of all metals. And I think this gets hot at 10 amps and acts as a heating element. And then everything melted and everything sort of just slid backwards and the connection to the positive was lost. So what's the solution to this? Replace the plug. So I've bought two of the cheapest plugs I could find on eBay. Let's take a look at them. They're going to be horrible. They're probably going to be very similar, actually. Ah, well, at least the um, screw-in bit on the end, which isn't screwed in very well, is metal. Right, let's unscrew this. This thread hasn't been manufactured very well. It's a bit wonky. Okay, so we got that. Oh, that pip's tiny. Much smaller than that one. Uh, we then have a fuse, we then have the spring, which is probably, once again, spring steel, and therefore has a relatively high resistance. Uh, then there's that clip, and then this should open up if I undo that bolt. Let's take a look in here. Oh, that's much simpler. This one had sort of complicated multiple parts, had an outer spring and an inner spring all a bit unnecessary. Now, I think the same is going to happen to this if I put 10 amps through it for half an hour, as happened to that. So I want to implement a mod. And since I believe it's the spring that's heating up and causing the problem, I want to provide a short circuit across the spring and yet still have its springy function. So here's my idea. Copper braid in the form of this solder wick, which was never very good. I found it quite difficult to use and have gone back to using my sucker. But I think this copper braid, and it should be collapsible. Yes, so it should be able to take movement. I reckon if I wrap that somehow around the spring, then we'll get the conductivity of the copper and the springiness of the spring. That should work. Oh, that's rather telling, the original plug <laughs> those are different lengths why are they different lengths uh, the original plug had a 10 amp fuse this one has been supplied with a 5 amp fuse right i think this cable is going to be too much hassle trying to pull it out of this uh strain relief so i'm just going to cut it there i think strip that and then work out how i'm going to solder it to the various parts of this leaving that led in place right from this thing here it appears that pause has the white stripe. So the question is, can I solder to this without upsetting the connection of that LED resistor? Uh, 
Possibly not. Right, I'm going to go for, how do you do this? You just press that, don't you? I'm going to go for hot because I need to get this to take solder quickly. Come on you, that's it. Let's do it. Oh, actually that solders quite easily. And I don't think the heat has got over to there, so that's fine. Let's solder neg, which doesn't have the white stripe, to this piece. That's gone on nicely. And pause onto here. And I can't remember whether I'm going to be... Ouch, that's getting extremely hot! Uh, interfering with the plastic moulding. Now, can I tack this LED leg back on there without it all falling apart? Yes, quite possibly. Well, that's all gone in really quite well. Push that LED in. So that's pause, which should be white stripe. Yes, it is. Neg on the outside, although only one of these is actually connected. The other one is just a dummy. That's a bit naughty. Is that the same situation in the old one? Now for the clever stuff with the copper braid. So it doesn't need to be that long. Just a bit over an inch maybe. I'm going to use two pieces and then I'm going to thread them up through the spring and just sort of bend them over the end. So like this and then fold them over. Oh, it's a little bit more springy than I had hoped. Right, I'll need the pliers because I want to have that fold so that it clamps this around the end. Oh, come on. Oh, it's all fraying now and splaying and going horrible. But I want two of those, so let's put the other one in and bend that over. And can we see that? So that's my mod to run a couple of pieces of copper braid through the spring so that when the spring closes the copper braid can close up with it but that should provide the conductivity to prevent the spring getting hot right let's close this up um, and then that now that fuse is slightly bigger than the other one so uh, I've got to hope that this all goes in let's put the pip in the end of this oh I haven't put the collar on have I is it that one I can't find another one no that feels loose where's the other one well, I don't know where the other one is. All this stuff fell off my desk earlier and bits shot in all directions. So I don't know where it is. That one I'll have to do. It's a little bit loose, but uh, it should be okay. Let's put that on there and screw that in. Yeah, I mean, that's all holding together nicely. Put the nut and bolt back through. Oh, uh, it doesn't seem to matter which end the nut is. And then put this to the test. So here's the setup. This um, fan heater, which is 12 volts, 15 amps, 150 watts. That doesn't quite add up, does it? But never mind. It um, takes too much power from this accessory socket. Let's switch it on. That's on the heat setting. And get close to this display here. And it briefly drew 150 watts. That's Indica there's a fault indication there that's gone yellow and the output has gone to zero so I figured if I put this thing in series with this heater I might be able to get it to take slightly less current and therefore it could uh, run consistently and it works so DC off let's clear that fault DC on okay let's try again so first plug in my new plug that I've just made and the little red LED comes on. I felt the relay click in here and the little green LED is on. Let's plug this heater into here. And yes, that's running. And it doesn't seem to be overloading the output of the power bank. Let's take a closer look. So it's only slightly less power. It's creeping up actually. But it's just under the cutoff threshold of this unit. So that means I can run it continuously. Now the question is, will this plug overheat and melt like the other one did?
Yeah, it smells very melty. It's absolutely red hot on the tip there. This one, completely cold. And that this is the one on the fan itself. So that would have been taking the same current as this. Uh, this one survived and this one hasn't. Let's take a look inside. That's a nuisance. I thought that was going to work because I was convinced that the heat was coming from the spring. I've got to take that off, haven't I? It's cooled down a little bit now. Um, yeah, coming from the spring, but uh, it seems no such luck. Right, let's have a look. And you can see that the main channel that the spring and the fuse sit in has distorted and gone a funny shape. Let's look at the other half. And this seems to have melted itself into the channel there. This um, backstop here has sort of bent back. Oh, and the spring has completely melted. <laughs> melted itself into the plastic here and now I actually can't I can't dig it out of there that's absolutely stuck in there hard so that was a total fail and that's the point where the heat blister appeared it's the spring which was obviously under some pressure and was being forced out to the side is starting to because of the heat starting to push its way out of the plastic moulding. Yeah, that didn't work at all, did it? Cheerio.